Hey guys, I'm back again and it is day 12 of Vlogmas and today I will be doing a spotlight, author spotlight on one of my favorite authors, Bernice L. McFadden. Okay, now Bernice L. McFadden is a writer that has pretty much followed me uh, partially through college and a little bit of the earlier, you know, years of my, like, adult life. And she is a fantastic writer. She tells us in-depth stories uh, where her main character is usually someone who feels like someone we could know. And she somehow manages to do this no matter what station in life they have. So I'm going to talk about her novels as we go along. Uh, one of the first ones that I read was this one right here, which is called Sugar. And I, I just absolutely love, love, love this novel. It is a novel that explores the friendship between a sex worker and a housewife. And I tell you, if there's not a better story of friendship where, you know, two people who are completely different, they come together and they both nourish and enrich each other's lives. This is the story that you need to read. So this is Sugar. And this is the 20th anniversary edition of Sugar, uh, which uh, came out, um, and I think it was in 2020. And I was lucky enough to interview her. Uh, actually, I have personally met Bernice McFadden. She's a lovely, lovely woman. And so for her 20th edition, 20th anniversary for this edition, I interviewed her over on Instagram. And if I can, I'll see if I can show that interview here on YouTube. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it happen, but if I can, I will. So this was a 20th edition. And this is the second part, which is called This Bitter Earth. So if you're going to read Sugar, you're going to need to get that second book at the same time as you get Sugar so that you'll be ready. So when you finish this one, then you can go to this one. Okay, the next book I want to talk about is this one right here, which is called Gathering of Waters. And this is a novel that explores the... The lynching of Emmett Till and Bernice McFadden tells this story through <clears throat> talking about water, and it's it's extraordinary the way she turns this story. It's very literary this one, but it's a beautiful story. It's a sad story, but it's definitely one of her best. So on the back, it says, in her new novel, Gathering of Waters, Bernice McFadden brings her own special vision to the unfortunate story of Emmett Till and his murder in Money, Mississippi. This moving and magical novel, which traces the generations leading up to and away from the horrible night in 1955, drew me in immediately and swept me along through its richly imagined world. I couldn't stop reading, caught up as I was in that enticing place between truth and fantasy, the here and now and the what was, the living and the dead, the ugliness and the beauty, the hatred and the love. What a rich chorus of voices McFadden has fashioned from this place called money. So this is uh, the critique by Lee Martin, who is the author of Break the Skin. Really, really, that is that right there sums it all up for me. Uh, I've had this one for a little while, but I love this edition. It has a little bit, of, it's gotten a little humid and then dried, so it's kind of crinkly, but I don't care. And it has deckled edges, which I absolutely love. 
This one I highly recommend that you pick up if you haven't. This next one is called The Book of Harlan. And oh my God, there is nobody that has read this that doesn't love it. So this is actually a story that is based on one of her family members. And it discusses Harlan and how he grows up and uh, what happens when he becomes a musician and then eventually leaves the U.S. and goes over to Europe. And it's fantastic. This is a book that has, look at that, it has 105 chapters. <clears throat> but the thing about it is the chapters are really short. So that makes the book extremely readable and it's hard to put down. So I feel like if you start reading this one, you, you better like block the afternoon or the morning because you're going to be reading until you finish it. I just basically read right through. I loved it so, so much. So it says the book of Harlan opens with the courtship of Harlan's parents and his 1917 birth in Macon, Georgia. After his prominent minister grandfather dies, Harlan and his parents move to Harlem where he eventually becomes a professional musician. When Harlan and his best friend, trumpeteer Lizard Robbins, are invited to perform at a popular cabaret in the Parisian enclave of Montmartre, affectionately referred to as the Harlem of Paris by Black American musicians, Harlan jumps at the opportunity, convincing Lizard to join him. So... I'm just going to stop reading there. Get the book, y'all. This one is super, super good. Okay, so this next one is a really interesting story. It's called Nowhere is a Place. And it explores the relationship between a mother and a daughter. So the crux of the story or the, the main issue of the story is brought out by an incident that happens in the past. So something happened and the mother slaps the daughter's face. And from this moment on, the daughter is in, she's like in a, in a questioning mode, like, like, why did she slap me? And it's from there that the story kind of develops into a lot more. And I tell you, it's done in such an interesting way because the relationship between the mother and daughter is essentially develops and grows through a road trip that they take together. So the daughter is driving and the mother is riding and she's reading out of a journal. And let me tell you, this one is really interesting. I don't know how she came up with this idea, but it's a fantastic way to talk about mother-daughter relationships. So <clears throat> this one, it says, Nothing can mend a broken heart quite like family. Sherry has struggled all her life to understand who she is, where she comes from, and most important, why her mother slapped her cheek one, one summer afternoon. The incident has haunted Sherry, and it causes her to dig into the, her family's past. Like many family stories, it is fractured and stubbornly reluctant to reveal its secrets. But Sherry is determined to know the full story. In just a few days' time, her extended family will gather for a reunion, and Sherry sets off across the country with her mother, Dumpling, to join them. What Sherry and Dumpling find on their trip is far more important than scenic sights here and there. They discover the assorted pieces of the family's past. Pulled together, they reveal a history of amazing survival and abundant joy. So good, this one. This next one I have for you is called Praise Song for the Butterflies. This is one of her recent novels. If I'm not mistaken, let's see. This one came out. There's a beautiful picture of Bernie Zell McFadden. This one, and there's a lovely autograph. This one <clears throat> came out in 2018. Sorry. <clears throat> And this one takes place in Africa and it, it takes place in West Africa to be particular. And it follows this character who's called Abeo Kata. And 
in her family, they have a lot of money problems. So the father decides to put his daughter up in altar, which means that he's offering his daughter um, as a way in exchange for money. So he's kind of, he's selling his daughter into a type of slavery and for money. And from there, we follow what happens to her through this experience of being pretty much rejected and given away because the family had some money problems. And it goes into deeply this idea of the mental trauma that happens after this kind of experience. And it's just done extremely well. I really enjoyed reading this one. It's a sad book, but it's it's a really good one. So it says, Abeo Kata lives a comfortable, happy life in West Africa as the privileged nine-year-old daughter of a government employee and stay-at-home mother. But when the Katia's idyllic lifestyle takes a turn for the worse, Abeo's father, following his mother's advice, places the girl in a religious shrine, hoping that the sacrifice of his daughter will serve as atonement for the crimes of his ancestors. Unspeakable acts befall Abeo for the 15 years she is held in the shrine. When she is finally rescued, broken and battered, she must struggle to overcome her past, endure the revelation of family secrets, and learn to trust and love again. It's just so, so, so good, this one. She did win quite a few awards for this one, actually. The uh, winner of the NAACP Image Award, winner of the 2017 American Book Award, also the 2017 Houston Wright Legacy Award nominee. And she was also uh, long listed for the Women's Prize as well, if I remember correctly. So yeah, highly recommend this one. Beautifully written book. The chapters aren't excessively long in this one either. They're quite short. So it's very, very readable. Okay, the next book I have is right here. It's called Camellia's Roses. And this one is one that... I've, I managed to find this one online, a really old copy, uh, and you see it's an old library copy. But I really enjoyed this one because it is this idea of someone who wants to live a particular kind of lifestyle. And it's what that person will do in order for that to happen. What sacrifices they're prepared to make to so-called live this particular life. It says, known for bringing to life a host of endearing characters who reveal tender truths about humanity, Bernice Amifad now turns her storytelling talents to an un unforgettable and deeply troubled woman named Camilla. Unfolding in a progression of stirring and powerful chapters, Camilla's Roses presents a life haunted by the past. Camilla's childhood was immersed in chaos and love and steeped in the myth of perfection. As an adult, she never looked back, refusing to acknowledge the people and places that had scarred her so many years ago. But a legacy of cancer proves inescapable, forcing Camilla to embrace the past, no matter how painful it may be, and to salvage what is left of her love in order to save her daughter. As Camilla discovers the bittersweet limitations of motherhood and reconciliation, she also awake awakens an inspiring message about the morality about the morality issues we all must face. And like the 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 thing about dealing with the past is something that is a very common theme, but it's also a common reality in in you know in everyday life. Is sometimes uh some people they have such heartache and pain in their past dealing with their family that it's something that they just want to leave and forget. She does a really good job with with this theme. And I love the title. When you read the book, you'll understand why it's called Camilla's Roses. And yeah, it's it's a very quick read as well because it's, it's, her books aren't very long. But let me tell you, they pack a punch. It really is an example of why it's not necessarily the longest book that's the best book. F from what I've learned from her writing is if you can get the right words together and you can get the right combination of themes and you can get 
larger than life characters written down, you have yourself a good story and it doesn't have to be 600 and something pages. It can be, you know, 200 and something, you know, 300 pages and still be just as good. Okay, now the last one I'm going to show you, because I don't have the other ones here. I think there's a couple other ones I have left, but they're downstairs. And look, it's Vlogmas. I ain't going downstairs. Oh, I'm trying to make this video as quick. But this last one is called The Warmest December. And this book, oh Lord, you got to get your mind right. This one was, it's written here, Serene and Expertly Imagine by Toni Morrison. I mean, this book, this family dynamic is hard to read in this book. It's a father in this book. He's highly abusive and the family is undergoing pressure and stress. And it's, this one was, this one was hard to read in places because I was just like, Lord Jesus. All right, so I'll read you a little bit so you understand what it's about. Now and then I forget things, small things that would not otherwise alter my life. Things like milk in my coffee, setting my alarm clock or o Oprah at four. Tiny things. One day last week, I forgot that I had, that I hated my father. Forgot that I had even thought of him as a monster and woke up early one cold morning boarded two buses traveling over an hour to sit by his bedside in Kings County Hospital. So begins The Warmest Winter, Bernice L. McFadden's poignant second novel, hailed as vivid in the New York Times and called a literary explosion in the Chicago Defender. Bernice L. McFadden has established herself as a major new talent in the literary community. So it says here, childhood can be rough, but for Kinsey, growing up in the low home means opening the bottom drawer of her father's dresser to choose which of the three belts coiled, waiting like snakes she wants to get whipped with. Trips to beehive liquors for, his, for her father's vodka and dreaming of the day she can escape apartment A5. Eventually, Kinsey does grow up and leave A5. She goes to school. She holds odd jobs and develops her own craving for the bottle. 20 years have passed. It's now the 90s, but not everything has changed for Kinsey. She is still haunted by her childhood and learning that her father is dying. She is shocked by her own desire to be with him during his final hours. So, you know, this book, it was it was super difficult to read because like this man was brutal and he was not a father to her. It's like why is she wanting to go and sit at this man's bedside like he does not deserve it but I highly recommend you read it because Bernice is very good at like I said developing storylines that are very realistic and it is a realistic scenario so highly recommend this one so that's all I have for you today that's my author spotlight on Bernice L. McFadden. I highly recommend you go and pick up some of her books. She's a fantastic writer and really worth exploring if you haven't explored her work. She really is a fantastic writer, like I said, who really does write about the Black community. And she also writes very pertinent main characters unforgettable main characters. Some of these you will never forget. You'll always remember who they are. So comment below and tell me if you've read any Bernice L. McFadden, if you're interested in reading any, and if so, which one of these are you interested in reading? And let's talk about it below and I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.